Hello and welcome. Today we're working on Excel Basics, our course in data analytics or data analysis. This is exercise one, so let's get started. So the very first thing that happens, we need to show how to do several different skills in Excel. So let's say we have a grade book and here we have, we have last names, we have first names, and we're going to do a final average. And you see where we can't really see everything on the final average, the, the label, we can widen the column if we need to, but let's, let's format the table um, in a little bit later and we'll have it where it looks a, a lot better. We have grades for about seven different students and we have here at the very top, this is the uh, maximum points possible. We need to figure out the total of all the uh, person's total grades and then figure out a final average based on that. We also added, we have some students with internships, so this is their um, dollars per hour. Here's how much they make for their internship. And so we want to keep up with how many people have an internship and we'll do a count later on. So let's get started. One thing that happens is you're in control of the font and the size. So one thing we'll do, I'm using a font, Roboto. You can use whatever font you want, and you can make it where it's, it's larger. You may get something that is very small. Make sure you use your, your screen real estate in a, in a good way. Now, one thing we want to do is we want to add up what's the total, what is the total points possible. Now, we can do this a couple of different ways. We can uh, use a formula, and we'll always formulas start with equal sign, equals uh, D1 plus, so on. But this is the sum formula. Let me start with actually typing in the formula sum, start with the parentheses, and then we'll highlight all the way across. This is a range, close parentheses, and we have 1,000. We have 1,000 total points that are possible. So we want to figure out for each student, each student, what is their total points? And I'm going to do it a couple different ways on the sum. We could start with uh, sum here. Sum, and do you see it recognizes this? Well, we can hit uh, tab or we can click on this with our, our cursor. I'm going to hit tab and it's, it changes it from sum to capital sum, starts the parentheses, and it says we need a number. Now we could pick each individual number comma, individual number. We don't have to do that. We can do the range. So we'll do the range just like we did before. A range, and then because it's a formula, we close with a parenthesis. So there's the sum, and we can copy it down. Now, several different ways to copy, uh, but the easiest way here is just copy and drag. I mean, click and drag, and so that copies the total. So for Carrie Foster, we have a formula and we have a total just for her grades. So her total is 910. Mike Jones at the very top was 845. Now, if we want to do the final average, we need to say, well, what percent is that out of the total 1,000? Now, let's take 845 and then divide, use the slash, divided by 1,000. And that is 0.845, and we, if we go ahead and format it for percent, and let's give ourselves a, a decimal place, 84.5%, then as we copy it down, it will be formatted. Now, we have an error here, and why? I want you to see this. This is important when you're first uh, learning Excel. The very first one is a formula, and that's correct. And you know the, the default format uh, when you copy, it uses a relative address because here, we use the sum of the row that's 3, D through I3, D3 through I3. Here, if we look at the 910, it is D9 through I9. So it switched from row 3 down to row 9. That's relative address. So what happens is we don't want both of them to be relative. We want the total to be relative, but we want the the 1,000 to be absolute. And the way we do that is we're going to go back to our original formula. We're going to highlight the J1, and we need to use F4. Now, 
most modern laptops or modern computers have F4 bu buttons or multimedia. So if I hit um, an, an F4 button, it would be a multimedia. I'm on a Mac. You might be on a Mac or a Windows. So if you hit function F4, it's going to toggle that dollar signs. The way to anchor and make it absolute is put dollar sign J, dollar sign 1. You can type that in, but it's going to be much more efficient to start using the F4 key, or if you need to, function F4. So we hit enter. That formula is unchanged, or the, the result is unchanged, but the formula underlying it is changed, and we can just copy this down. So now we know that Carrie Foster, 910 points, she made a 91.0%. So that's excellent. Let me show you another way to copy this down. If you go to the very top, bottom right-hand corner, do you see the outline plus changes to a solid plus? and you double click and it sends it all down. And that's a very good way of, of copying and pasting in a much faster way. Now when we get to internships, we wanna put dollar signs. Make sure that you, you know, formatting is gonna be one of your uh, things you can do to make sure it's very readable for somebody else. Now, let's say you have many, many columns and it's, it's off the page. You might want to have right beside their name, you might want to have their, their class average. So we don't have to recalculate that. It's already calculated, but we can use a formula. So the formula will be equals, and I'm going to highlight over here to K3 and hit enter. And it just takes whatever that calculation is, and it just brings it over to that third column there. So you have a last name, you have first name, you have the final average. All right. So here, um, we've done a pretty good job with this. So let's, let's do the, make this a little table. So I'm gonna highlight all this and make all borders. So we have, it looks like a good table. One of the things we need to do at the very top, so we can make sure we can read it. I'm gonna do a wrap text. And do you see the ones that are final average if, it, if it's too narrow? then it's going to wrap the text and it gives you, you know, two rows within one cell basically. So it wraps the text. And so it's easy to read that way. And one thing we can do, we can center them and we can make them um, centered horizontally, horizontally and vertically. Horizontally, I guess, is not a word anymore. Too bad. So final average and internship. So this looks great. Now we might want to bold it. Uh, we could even do some kind of little um, slight formatting where it looks like we finished some kind of, um, you know, it's a final product. Now let's do some other things, average and standard deviation. So average, let's say we wanna do the, the average of some of these rows and we won't do them all the way across, we'll just do some. So we're gonna start with equals and the formula is average and it starts to recognize that, hit tab. And let's just average, what is the class average? It'd be nice to know, and we have a range, we close the parentheses, so it's 82.6. So anybody that made it higher than 82.6, they're above the class average. Sometimes when you do homework or exams or, or things like that, they say, hey, what's the class average? Now, because I copied a percent, it copied the percent also, so I need to convert these back to numbers. I'm gonna use the comma here and um, two decimals is fine, I'll just do one decimal. So the average on exam one was 165.7 out of 200, so we can figure out the percent if we wanted to. Now we can do the same thing for uh, standard deviation. We'll start with STD. We'll have standard deviation. Uh, let's look at it again. This is, uh, We'll do it, this is a population, so we can do standard deviation of the population. We'll highlight, close parentheses, and let's copy it over and then we'll do that percentage in just a minute. We'll copy it over. So there's our percentages. We've copied it over and there's our numbers. Let's make it fewer numbers and we want the first one to be a percentage because it's in percent. So the standard deviation is 5%. And then homework, 
uh, resume, the exam. Now, sometimes we want to know the high and the low. The high is called a max function. So tab over. The max, we want the max of these. It's going to be a percentage as we copy it across. So we want to make these just regular numbers. The high grade on exam one was 180. The high grade in the class is 910 points. We do the same thing for low, which is uh, minimum, min. So we'll say, what is the minimum? So it's 75 is the low grade in the class, the low class average. I'm going to do minimum again, just so you can see how that works. Minimum, and we can highlight this. And 180 is the class minimum for, whoops, for the homework. That's the class minimum. We'll copy it across. So what we have is, let me kind of do it where they're all formatted correctly. So the low on the resume, somebody didn't turn in the resume, so, so it looks like they got a zero. So the, um, the low was 150, the low was 120, and so on. Now, we want to have the number of students with internships. And so we're going to use, this is called a count function. So we're going to do count. And we'll tab over. And we want to count all the students that have an internship. So we have five. So we can say, hey, out of the total number of people in our class, five of our students have an internship. Okay, now we're about finished and we look at the very bottom. Uh-oh, we've got to add Fred Benny and he has a B average. We can, I'm, I'm going to uh, let you make up uh, whatever the, uh, his grades are going to be. Just make sure it's a B average somewhere in the 80s. And he has a $15 internship. So what happens here is let's go in the middle. Let's click on the, say, the uh, row six. And I'm going to right click, insert. Now, what happens is um, his last name is Benny. His first name is Fred. And we can copy down. He can still do a uh, percentage. We can copy that down. That's going to be a formula. He's got a $15 internship. Now, look, it's already formatted for dollars because I went into, into the cell and inserted. So let's say, what is a B student? He's going to get, say, 240 points on homework. He turned in his project and made an 88. Um, his resume, he turned it in and got a 45. Let's look at our total uh, points. We need to do total points. We need to add up to it where it's going to be in the 800s. He made a 175 on the exam. He made a 165 on the exam. And he made a um, 150. Let's see if that works. 150. So he made, Fred Benny made 863 points. So he made it 86.3. And that's how you do it. So even if you add something in the middle, it's already going to be formatted. So here's how to do the grade book. So um, the one last thing we might want to do is, let's say, let's say we want to, highlight all this. Let's say we'll just highlight this and let me show you how we can change it where uh, it's going to be on last name. So we go to data and let's sort for last name. Do you see right here what we have? Now let's watch. Mike Jones has an 84.5 and Carrie Foster has a 91. So let's make sure those all work. So I've highlighted just the names and just their grades and I'm going to sort A to Z. So Mike Jones should have an 84.5. So we sorted it for Benny and then Crow, Foster, Johnson, Mathis, Smith, Smithson. And so we might want to sort it that way. You can sort it for other ways. You can do a filter and you can highlight all this and do a filter, uh, but we'll do that later on. All right, so that's the first uh, data set. The second one is going to be um, let's say we have just a little simple formula uh, that we need to figure out. Let's say we have, um, we have workers and they're going to get paid and they work so many hours. So let's just say we know 
that our average worker, and let's just make this a, a different font altogether. A lot of times Calibri is the default. Just make something different. Make something different, make sure it's readable. If it's too small, make it bigger. If it's too big, you know, if it's ginormous, if it's too big, then you say, okay, I need to make it a little bit smaller, but you can make it, um, you are in control of this, so don't feel like you can't uh, change all this. All right, so we're gonna make this a little, so I can do Command B or Control B and make it bold. I can center these. Now, let's say that we have days of the week, Monday through Saturday, and people worked a total of this many hours during the week. And they, uh, we pay everybody $24 an hour. So let's say we pay $24 an hour. So how do we calculate gross pay? It's going to be $44 times 24. We need to make it absolute value. So we need to do uh, function F4 on the C2. And so those people then earned $1,056 that day all the way down. And so when they worked on Saturday, a few people worked on Saturday and it totaled 18 hours, then we took 18 times 24. We want to anchor the 24 and that's called an absolute address. So you see this B9 is the 18 and the dollar sign C dollar sign two is an absolute address. We're gonna do the same type of thing. Let's say that we think our withholding, um, let's call it withholding rather than um, than taxes, because it could be other things besides just taxes. So our withholding from each pay, uh, each pay stub and everything for each person is going to be a thousand times, uh, I'm sorry, the thousand fifty six times, and we're going to put a parentheses, parentheses one minus 25%, do function F4, uh, hit it twice here, so function F4, so make it absolute. And that's going to take the 25% out and leave you the 75%. Um, oh, we don't need, we just need the um, 25%, sorry. So that times 25% function F4. So that's the 25% that's going to be withheld. Make that a percent at the very top, and then we should be able to copy it down. We can double click and copy it down. So let's check our work. We can go into the formula. It's 432 times 25%. We feel confident about that number. Then the net pay is just going to be, start with an equals, 1,056 minus 264. So the people on Monday, they earned 1,056, and then they get to receive total pay of 792. We'll copy it all the way down. So that's the net pay. Now, one thing we might want to do but we might want to say, hey, I'd like to know the total down here. So if you want to know the total, you can sum and then copy it across. We've done that. You can do the sum of this, sum of all that. But what you can do is you can highlight all that. And then at the very top, you can do the auto sum. And the auto sum is going to be, this is the sum of that column. And then each column gets summed all the way along the way. There's one other shortcut you can do. Let me get rid of that. Let's highlight it again, where I want the total. And if you're on Windows, it is gonna be Alt equals. If you're on Mac, it's gonna be Command Shift T. It all happens at once. It is the, the subtotal, the, I mean the total rather of each column. You can do it for 100 columns or for 50 rows or whatever. And so it saves you a whole lot of time. Now to finish up a statement, you wanna to do top and do bottom double border and we're finished. This looks good. If you want to make it where it, you know, you can put um, boxes around it if you wanted to. Um, you can uh, highlight it in different colors, make it where it's readable. That's fine. You want to look like, make uh, sure it looks like a finished product for you. All right, so that's how you do get started with grades and, and pay. Um, and thanks, thanks for watching. We'll see you next time.